Hi friends, we are going to talk today about adding an event and this is really where the magic happens in Skyward. So I'm in a grade book and like I've said in other videos, the grade books are all the same for events. Um, I'm, the grade books are all the same <laughs> in Skyward, excuse me. And I just want to show one quick thing in your display options that I skipped over in the display video. And that is in our stu our event display. There's something that will make your life easier in here. So I really don't really make use of any of these. We'll talk about this data trend charts later. Um, I do newest to oldest, but if you want to see it in the order that it was assigned and done in, you can do ascending. Skill heading, so these are they call them skills, but these are our standards, how each standard is put. So it's set to be in the short form. Um, you can make it a little longer so you can see more of it. But remember, if you just hover over the title, it'll show you. Um, max default points doesn't matter for us because we are doing mastery grading. Same with the family access and student access. We don't have that turned on in elementary. That's only in secondary. So that does not apply to us. But this is the big part where it says event grade entry. One of the awesome things is in elementary, we work a lot on um, doing cross-cutting concepts and having integration. And so sometimes you will have an, a, an event that you are grading that covers more than one subject and more than one skill. So if you click this multiple, multiple skill event display, it will make your life much easier. Um, and again, we don't really take attendance in the, in the grade books that we actually grade in. So this one doesn't really matter, but you can leave that. And then this is just total preference. It's always going to display the description of the event or the title you give it. Then you can just decide if you want it to be a shortened version or a longer version. It won't ever put the whole giant thing in there. Um, so you can see uh, it's description of characters and it just has care. Um, so if you like to see more or if you like it short, you can choose that. The difference between the week and the date is, uh, again, in elementary, this isn't as big of a deal, but the week of the course, I personally like the f description and date in the slightly longer form. Um, so that is how I would have my events displayed. And remember, in Skyward, you always have to press save. Um, so I'm going to press save. All right, so you can see how my skills changed a bit. So I can see more of it, not all of it. And then if I hover over, it will tell me in Skyward the skill in real life. That's the different standards we're grading on. All right, so now I'm going to go in and add an event. So I have some options here. Um, I'm just going to talk about this, the advanced exporting, importing events. That is not something that applies to us in elementary. Um, not, we don't use any of the programs that talk to Skyward on that. I will say that Canvas does talk to Skyward, but only in secondary because, again, it's, it's Canvas doesn't know how to do mastery grading. So Canvas and Skyward are not speaking the same grading language. Skyward is speaking in mastery and Canvas is speaking just in straight scores. So if you have colleagues who talk about their Canvas and their Skyward talking to each other, um, unfortunately that's something that's not available in elementary. All right, when you have a, lit, a bunch of events put in, then you can go to the list. I don't have any events put in, so I'm not gonna go there. I'm just gonna go straight to add an event. All right, so when you add an event, the first thing you have to pick is the subject. So I'm in ELA, so my three main subjects are speaking and listening, reading, and writing. This is just for practice, so I'm going to say reading. Once you select the subject, then all the skills, or like I said, they're really the standards, the grading standards, and now the real standards, will auto-populate. 
and then you can press what standard you're going to do. Then you're going to put in a description. Um, so for example, I'm going to, you can see I've already done a few. I'm going to do my oral biography presentation. Now this detailed description honestly is not really going to help anyone. Um, if we did have family access pulled up, you could put in a longer, big description and then parents could click on it and see what it was and the directions and all the things they did and this and that. But, you know, you don't need that for you. You know what the assignments are. All right. The day that you're entering it is always there. Then you have the assigned date, um, the proposed due date, and the actual due date. Um, to be perfectly honest, I rarely changed these. I just left them as the day I put in because, again, I, I knew when I was doing it. And because families aren't looking at it, the date wasn't that important. But if you do want to change these, so say I'm entering it today, but this is in an assignment from last week, I would put that in. And you do have to make them match. So I have, would have to say, you know, it was assigned on the 10th. It was due on this day. And then if you gave some sort of extension, like a college professor, you could change this. But honestly, in elementary, make it easy on yourself. Don't worry about the, the assigned dates. Just leave them how they are. Um, then... As I talked about in other display options, I have my expected level performance here as my default, so that's fantastic. So I'm just going to do a simple event first. So now I have some options. I can save and go back, and that'll take me back to the grade book. If you wanted to enter in a bunch at a time, you could. Save and add another would put you straight back into this menu to add another one. Most of the time, what I do is save and grade. Always you have an undo button and a back button. This attach button is, again, you could attach a copy of the assignment if it was a worksheet or something, because we're back in the 90s and we only teach with worksheets. Then if this was being shared with parents, they could see that, but you're never really going to use that in elementary. And the options, again, is not something that we would ever use. So you don't have to worry about those. So I'm going to go to save and grade. And here I have my grading screen. So normally you would have the list of students. I've hid my students' names for privacy. This tells us if they were absent that day. But remember, we don't take attendance in ELA, so it's not there. Then we're going to put in our grade. This is for special codes. This is if you don't want it to count on their grade. Um, this isn't a big deal in elementary because the grading program is not averaging the grades and giving them an A, B, C, D. Um, but if you did, for some reason, wanted to put in something that you didn't want to count towards their grade, you could mark it there. But if you're not going to do that, then I wouldn't put it in. Then you have the, a missing assignment. And so if the student is missing that I or missing event, you can mark it there. And then this is to override different things, and we're not going to worry about that. Okay, over here, we have the mass assign option, and I'm going to show you the magic that is the mass assign option. I'll show you that in just a moment. Here are your different grade marks that you can enter. Um, so you notice we're not putting in percentages. We're just putting in our mastery grading. And then down here, we have the massive amount of special codes that you can put in. So the special code is this white box right here. Again, remember that this was built K-12. And in elementary, you just really don't need most of these special codes. Um, the only thing you're really going to use is missing. And because that's used so much, um, you can... It's there's a easy button for it. If you wanted to mark something as incomplete, so you knew that it was incomplete, but honestly, in mastery grading, you should probably just let them complete it, so you know how they're doing on mastery. All right, so I have some options when I'm entering in a grade. 
I can go through and I can simply start typing in grades for my different students. Um, <laughs> I was counting, sorry. So those are our options. But the other awesome thing is I can mass assign grades. And sometimes teachers get nervous to do this. But just so you know, when you do mass assign grades, as long as you don't click that overwrite, what it will do is anything that's still gray with this asterisk, it will put it in. Um, and so if I click three and then apply, bam, you'll notice that those ones I put in at the top did not change, but everything else changed to a three. So this is really great because you can also remove all the grades. Let me show you how I use this as a teacher. Um, say you're putting in a quick check and most of your kids got it. So I would simply go through and put in my friends who are still working and making progress towards mastery. So I put in my few twos and maybe I had one one. Let's be realistic, there's probably more than one one but everyone else got mastery. So then I could set this to three and I can apply. Oops, I had it on remove guides, sorry. <laughs> Blooper, okay, so we're doing the few twos that we had, a couple ones, making sure my toggle is actually on what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna mass assign grades and everybody else showed me mastery on this quick check. So I'm going to press apply and there I'm done grading. Um, I've shown you how the remove grades work. Um, another thing is, like I said, this is for the no count. In elementary, you're just not going to use no count, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, one thing I do want to show you, if I go back to delete these grades, then it just defaults to the gray. Um, and then what you can do is say mark non-graded as missing and it will automatically go through and say all of these were missing. So say you gave a quick check or a math test or I guess we're in ELA so you gave a spelling test and these two friends were absent that day. So you can mark this as missing and then later I'll show you in reports that will help you track what um, students might need to make up and also help you show parents what their students have missed when they check them out and say you're not doing anything important today right you can show them um, you can remove all the missing if this isn't something that you're gonna want to go back and worry about so once I'm done putting my grades in then I'm gonna say save because we always say save and then you will notice that my color coding is in place so I can start seeing data trends. So that's how to put in a simple event. I'm gonna show you something even cooler though. So I'm gonna go back to add events. And let's say, as you remember, I was doing this oral, oral biography presentation. Well, it was a biography. They had to do research. It was also an oral presentation. Um, and let's just pretend somehow I incorporated, uh, they had to do oral biography presentations on mathematicians. So I'm going to do a speaking and I'm going to say um, that they have a speaking and listening standard. Again, I'm not messing with the detailed description or my dates. Um, but I am going to add multiple standards. So down here in this skill option is where we can do that. So here is all the speaking and listening standards. You'll notice that the one I selected up here is already marked, so I don't need to mark that again. Um, I'm in a kindergarten grade book, to be honest, so this isn't going to make a lot of sense on standards, but you get the idea. So let's say they were um, retelling stories um, they also worked on, there was a writing component, so I'm going to add in a writing. And then also, I wanted to see that it was a group project, so they cooperated with others. I'm going to stick that in learning skills. And then, like I said, I could even put math in here. I'm not going to do that because that's a little too many. 
to show you, but you can put as many standards as you want. Um, this class option, this is just kind of showing where it was created. I honestly never really mess with that. Technically, you could select these classes, but because all of our students are all in this, are all the same in all of our classes, you don't really need that. So now, like I said, I'm going to go to save and grade, and then we have this beauty that shows up. So, here we're in our speaking and listening, um, and this is just like we showed before. I'm going to go back so you can go through and add this, but if I go here so you can see this assignment that I, um, or event, excuse me, that I put in has now shown up in speaking and listening. It's also there in retail and it's also there in writing, and I only had to add it once. Now, if I go to my list events, and you can see, here's the first one I put in that was simple, and then here is the one I put in that had three different skills. So I can go to grade entry, and from this screen, I can actually enter in the grade in all three standards at the same time. And I have the option to put the same grade for all three standards. So, for example, this student did great. They showed mastery on their speaking, their reading, and their writing in this project. So I put a three, and it puts a three in all three. This student... Um, I'm going to choose to differentiate the different standards a bit. So they did a great job with their research and their writing, um, but they struggled a bit with their speaking. So we're going to go with a two because they're still making progress on that. So you have some different options here, like I said. So I can go through and put different grades for the standards or I can say they get the same grade by using this grade all column. I still have my mass assign options. I still have my overwrite options where if I click that, then when I do, um, so for example, in overwrite here, it will um, say I come down here and I'm just going to put in they had a two on this one, and but the other two were threes. So I put a three here, and it will fill in anything that's blank with what I have in the in the all standard. But if I use the overwrite option, I can put a one here, and then if I say overwrite, it will override what I've already put in. So if I put a two there see it just changed my one to a two so that's what overwrite does sometimes it's helpful most of the time i don't use overwrite um and just know that these are turning green because i've entered in new information not because they're showing mastery it's a little bit of a bummer that they did think of a new color but that's what the green means um now i don't have my options here to um the easy button to say missing, but you can say show cell details. Oops, you have to be in a cell, excuse me. Show cell details. And then you can come in here and you can mark it as missing. Um, so, and I could even do that in this one. So I would go to show cell, cell details. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't do it in that one. So if you're doing missing, it's not quite as easy to do it on this. Um, your grade marks and the million special codes that you're not worried about are there. And then again, I'm always going to press save. I'm going to press save and back because I'm done entering. Here's my list. Um, so I am going to use my back button over here. And now you can see... Here's my biography where I have put in the different grades that have gone on the different um, standards for one project. 
Now, to be honest, most of the things you're going to be grading might have only one of skill, but say you're doing a response to reading, then that's probably going to have a grade that you can give them under one of the reading comprehension standards, and it's also probably going to have a writing grade. So easy, two grades, one quick entry. So once you have some events in, um, one more amazing trick is this quick, quick grading button. So you can come up here and press the quick grading button. You want to be careful with this because you don't want to delete any of your hard work. But you can do it. Be brave. And if you press click quick grading, it's a tongue twister, it makes everything editable. So now every single standard and every single event, I can go through and add or type in the grade on every single one for my whole grade book um, without going into the list of events or clicking on the standard to put in the grades. So um, what I use this for mostly was when I had a student who was moving and I needed to do the report card quickly, um, I could come through and go through and add in their grades for mastery on each of the standards. Um, and you can see they're turning green as I have changed it, so it helps you track what you have edited or changed and what you haven't. Um, and then you would just press save, and it would save all those grades. I'm going to press back so that I don't mess up this teacher's grades.